Sarah and Gabriel Chrisman live their daily lives like it's the 19th century. Think oil lamps, dip pins, and wooden ice boxes. We really have embraced a lot of the technology that we liked, and that's the technology of the 1890s. Every morning, Sarah winds her mechanical clock before the couple starts their day, taking a bath with a pitcher and a bowl in their cast iron tub before cooking centuries-old recipes from scratch on her wood-burning stove. Ta-da! Built in 1888, the Christmas home is a sanctuary of Victorian living with hundreds of historical artifacts confined within its walls. A lot of people, when they come into our home, they say it reminds them of a museum. Sarah and Gabriel stay true to their 19th century values, even when they leave home. A 43-year-old librarian without a license, Gabriel bikes 12 miles to work on his handcrafted leather seated cycles. While Sarah stays home writing Victorian historical fictions by hand, the 40-year-old author bringing the Gilded Age to life with just fountain pens and paper. The self-proclaimed Victorian couple enjoying life and love, less distracted by material things. I am, this is fascinating, Sarah and Gabriel Christman. Join us now from their home in Port Townsend, Washington. Welcome to the show. I, I have so many questions for you. Gabriel, let me ask you, you started out by buying vintage clothes from that era, and I think a lot of people understand that. How did it dovetail into the life you're living now? Well, we realized that once we started wearing the clothes, we felt like we learned a great deal from just the differences that they made you understand the, the different posture that came with the different clothes, the different way that you moved. Um, and we realized that we could learn equally as much from many aspects of daily life. And we decided, why not? You know, we can potentially learn a great deal from being able to just see what things were like and, and see how the technology worked. And it really developed from there. The more we adopted, the more we learned, the more we enjoyed it. Sarah, when you met and married, were you both into this already? Or did you influence Gabriel or vice versa? Well, it's definitely something that was of interest to us our whole lives. I mean, since I was a very little girl, as a very small child, I had two big dreams. I wanted to live in the Victorian era, and I wanted to be a writer. <laughs> and when I, but everyone had always told me that time travel is impossible and the writers don't make a living. <laughs> but, and so I feared that my dreams would never come true. But then I met a man who encouraged me in my dreams. Aww. And together we helped each other realize how we could make our dreams come true and how those dreams could serve each other, in fact, and serve our relationship. Oh, well, Gabriel, this is not an easier life. I mean, I think sometimes people believe a more simple time is without a cell phone, without some of the gadgets. I mean, you have the bike, you have the stove, uh, you, you have an icebox and not a refrigerator. You, ha you know, those things are not necessarily easier when you could have a modern refrigerator. So it's not as if life is just simple for you every day because you are living in the past. Right. Yeah, it's not about, you know, things being simpler. It's about things being different. And for us, it's a little bit about that intentionality. We really want to choose a way of living that's something that we can then learn from and be able to share with other people. And that's what Sarah's books are about, is being able to show what we've learned by doing things a different way and show people that there are different perspectives, that they can have choices about how they live their lives as well. And we don't expect everyone to choose the exact same thing as we do, but we want to show them that it's possible, that wow. you definitely can do this and learn from it. There was a great saying back in the Victorian era, send not for a hatchet to break open an egg. <laughs> and so what they basically meant by that is that decide what you really need and use that. And you don't need to necessarily always be buying the latest, trendiest thing just because that's being advertised. <laughs> right, that's a great point. Well, Sarah and Gabriel are going to stay around. They're going to show us around their 19th century lifestyle as we take a closer look at, I think, one of the most fascinating couples I've ever interviewed in my career. We'll be right back.
On a wood stove, if you want a different temperature, you just move the food farther from the fire or closer to the fire. And there you go. This is called a parlor pig because of the shape. It also kind of looks like a rolling pin with feet. This is a footrest, which is oodles of fun. Gas and is wonderful. Basically, it's a way of making sparkling water, carbonating water at home so that you can use it to make sodas. This is a chatelaine. These come up quite a bit in my stories. It's basically a tool belt for a Victorian lady. This is my little lap desk, so I can sit anywhere and write on this. And then I just sit and write. I call it my Victorian laptop. <laughs> we are back with Sarah and Gabriel Chrisman, the couple who traded in a high-tech lifestyle for a life in the Victorian age. Um, Sarah, I'll start with you. The Chatelaine I'm obsessed with. <laughs> and uh -huh. I love that. What a genius idea. And mm -hmm. your lap desk. That is your version of a laptop, of course, but it doesn't store as much as we get to store on our laptop. Are you missing out? <laughs> Not at all. Actually, there have been some really interesting studies that the brain works differently when we write by hand as opposed to typing and doing things on a screen. And by writing by hand and using that different part of my brain, I find it really helps with the stories that I write since they take place in a time when people were writing everything by hand. Tell me about cooking. I know you're into recipes from that time as well. What's your favorite dish? Oh, golly, it's hard to choose. I think one of my favorites is the Victorian rose cake. So I made that for my birthday last year. It's a cake that's actually flavored with roses, the flower. Oh. And that one, um, I found it in one of our antique cookbooks, the recipe. And I like that one so much that in one of my stories, I have one of the characters making that cake. Now you love, I'm told also, eggs on foam. Oh yeah, that's a wonderful one. And so easy. So with that one, you separate the eggs and then you whip up the whites into stiff peaks and then you just drop the yolks onto them and put them in the oven under the broiler. Or just a hot oven. Now, isn't that what we call sunny side up now? So is, it, is that sunny side up, but they called it eggs on foam then? It's So sunny side up is just fried. Sunny side up is pretty flat yeah. compared to eggs on foam. Yeah. Eggs on foam is like eating a cloud. Oh, okay. I like very... that description. Gabriel, you're, I love your, your um, water. Uh, you made the, the sparkling water or the carbonated soda. That is genius. How do you keep with this bike? How do you keep up the bike? I would imagine some of the parts are tough to find. Yes, the parts are tough to find before any standardization of even threading. And so I make most of the parts myself when I can. Um, I've learned how to use a brazing torch and, and use a lot of period methods for metalworking. And it's just, it's like magic when you, when you finally work out what the trick is to be able to make things from scratch and by hand. And it's, for me, it's such a wonderful thing to be able to not just use and understand the technology, but actually build it. And I think of the bikes as being true time machines because you can experience exactly what people did back then and I really think it's a, it's a wonderful privilege to be able to build bikes and let people experience that themselves. Does it get expensive? I know a lot of times people assume old is less expensive, but the rarer the part, um, the more difficult it is to find. I would imagine it drives up some of the things uh, in, in cost that you need to keep this going. But we're not spending money on cell phones. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> or big screen TVs. So it's all just choices and how you choose to prioritize things. It's also a really good reason to learn how to make them yourself. Oh, okay, and, and you sew all of your clothing, Sarah, most of the clothing? I do, and the dress I'm wearing now is a copy of a dress from the 1890s. And it's, I used fabric that's also a copy of fabric from the, the same time. Do you ever plan to abandon this lifestyle or do you believe this is how you will live until whenever. This is how we love to live. This is yeah. how we want to live. This is how we choose to live. Wow. So 
I, it's just amazing. I, I, I saw your videos and, and read a lot about you, but I think it's nothing like talking with someone and hearing in your own words your journey. This is fascinating. Thank you so much for the peek inside your lives. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Of course. And for more information on Sarah's books, as she mentioned, you can go to Amazon as well as go to TamaronHallShow.com.